Thank you for joining us for today's webcast, Count Me In, Inventory Plus at the University of Virginia's Alderman Library. My name is Beth Ann Goodwill, and I'm an account representative with Backstage Library Works, and I'll be moderating today's discussion. We are broadcasting today from Charlottesville, Virginia, Provo, Utah, and Loma Linda, California. I would like to introduce today's presenters. John Reese is Vice President of On-Site Services at Backstage Library Works, and Jacob Bastian, the Backstage Project Manager in charge of the On-Site Inventory Plus Project at the University of Virginia. We will be recording today's presentation, and that recording along with the slides will be available to you in the coming weeks. We will email you a link. All attendees lines are muted, so please direct any questions or comments you have through the question window, and we will have the opportunity to answer them during the question answer breaks in the presentation. This morning and this afternoon, we would like to take a brief poll to start the discussion. When was the last time your library did an inventory? It looks as though our responses are falling into two main categories. 31% are sharing that within the past two years, they've done an inventory at their library. And then 45% are saying before my time, if ever, there was a, an inventory done at their library. Um, thanks so much for sharing your responses and participating in that poll with us. Without further ado, I would like to turn it over to John Reese. Thank you, Beth. Thanks. Uh, my name is John Reese. I am the Vice President of Operations for On-Site Services, as Beth Ann had said, and uh, in charge of uh, inventories that we do throughout the United States. And we want to talk a little bit about what we're calling Inventory Plus. It's not really a new service, but we've finally given it a name. Um, as you can see by the poll, many libraries have not done an inventory for some time. More than likely, the reason is they just don't have time to do the inventory. Inventories are often relegated to last on the list of libraries tasked to do. The reason for this is there's just so much to do at a library that the work uh, to do the, get done that the library has trouble getting to the, a full inventory. And a full inventory can be time consuming and somewhat overwhelming. Uh, so, um, Backstage is pleased to introduce a solution for the libraries that need more than just a count of their books or their collection. We're going to recall the service Inventory Plus. I'm going to talk a little bit about the plus in Inventory Plus. Uh, the idea is that we go in and we're going to do an inventory for the library. That means we're going to touch every book which is great because that's something that doesn't often happen in a library. While we touch these books, we're gonna find that some work needs to be done beyond just scanning in and, and adding a, a book count to your inventory. So I'm gonna go over a few of these. First, we'll talk about barcodes and spine label checks. As part of your inventory, we can make sure every item has a barcode that is connected to a record within your database. If it doesn't have a barcode, we can connect it or we can add it. And if it does have a barcode but not connected, we can connect it. Uh, this goes the same for RFID tag verification. If your barcode or your library is operating under RFID tags, we can scan the RFID tag or read the RFID tag, you should say, and verify uh, that that it is connected to a book and that is the correct book that it's connected to. We also, what we find when we do inventory is that there's an awful lot of books and it really depends on the library, but there's an awful lot of books that that are either, are there is a, a barcode, but they're not connected to a book in the library. That doesn't mean the book doesn't exist in the database, but it's not connected or 
there's not a barcode and the book uh, is not connected at all or in some instances either way the book has not been created or uh, you know, mark record has not been created for that so what we uh, we can do is every time we touch a book that is not connected we can connect it to the database and or if need be create a brief record so the library now has access via their database to that record. It's kind of a shame to, the, uh, when a book is in the library but not accessible uh, because the, it's just not connected to their database. We can take this one step further. We call this surrogate capture for cataloging. What we do, a brief record is fine. It gives you title, author, and a few other elements, but it doesn't really give you the full mark record. What Backstage can do and has been doing is we take these brief records that we've created, we can send them to our metadata department where full cataloging can be done either via uh, copy cataloging or in many instances, original cataloging. We also can assure that your library uh, collection is in shelf list order. Now there's a little bit more to that. Uh, one of the things that we do is when we are working on problem books, when we're done with that, we can go back and refile them in appropriate shelf list order. If a library needs to enter file books into uh, another collection, we can do that and keep the books in, within shelf list order. Or if a library simply needs to move their books either to another area of the library or another building, we can do that for the library and assure that the books will come to the new place in shelf list order. So shelf list, uh, finally, if we if you want us just to read your library as it stands and put the books in their correct order, we can do that as well. Um, another service that we offer is archival rehousing. Uh, a lot of libraries have archival areas and, and many of their, uh, their books are, are cased in rehousable uh, containers. Not all is the case though for libraries and in, in certain areas of library that are not designated for archives, the books are in pretty bad shape. And so we can evaluate with the library, the condition of the book, set a criteria for housing or rehousing the book. And per the library's request, we can rehouse these books. A very popular uh, service that we offer, uh, the next one is, is called, we call it weedy, but it's a little bit beyond that. What uh, we can set up a criteria with the library and pull books to weed as we go through the inventory, but better than that, the library uh, often has a list of items that they want to read for or weed for a variety of reasons. Or they may not want to weed it, but they want to move it to offsite storage or some other facility. Same principle applies here with a list and an action for that list, we can incorporate that into our um, inventory software. So when we scan a particular book in, it'll tell us that this book needs to be weeded or this book needs to be sent to offsite storage. And at that point, we'll put it on the appropriate cart to get it over to the appropriate place. Cleaning is a, a very popular process uh, when doing an inventory. What we find out is that there are a lot of areas in the libraries that just do not get the attention that some of the high, more, the volumes that uh, circulate a little bit more do. And uh, when we can go through ahead of the inventory, we go through with the vacuum cleaners and dust uh, rags and we clean the shelf and the tops of the books and the areas around it. Uh, this is important, particularly for libraries that are moving their books to high density storage or to a, another location. And then finally, there is prep for formatting. <clears throat> what that involves is when a book decides, or when a book, when a library decides that there is a particular collection that they want to digitize, that collection, uh, if they're doing the work with Backstage, that collection has to be prepared for the digitizing. It involves removing paper clips and extra paper, along with a few other uh, services. And so we can do that while we're doing an inventory, if we know that the library has a section of, of books that they want to go ahead and um, 
uh, SIM for digitization. So we talked a little bit about what that's what our service involves, but now I want to talk specifically, and the, and the rest of this presentation will be specifically about what we're doing at the University of Virginia's Alderman Library. First thing we want to talk about is the challenges that that were presented to us. All right, and this, these are the challenges that the library had. The library has an upcoming renovation that is to take place <clears throat> in 2019. If you take a look at the library, beautiful building to, uh, on the right, uh, bottom right, doesn't really look like it holds 2.5 million items, but it actually does. And what the libraries found out is that those 2.5 million items need, needed a little bit of maintenance before they were moved off to, when they're doing the renovation, they need to be moved off to a high density storage and another library to, that will be taking these collections. Library also realized that they had insufficient staffing to complete the job in a timely manner. Other challenges that they had that they were obvious to them, and then as we sampled and tested the books, we found ourselves is that um, the collection is a very old collection at the University of Virginia, predates Mark for sure, and items uh, in the uh, catalog have been added, shifted, and removed throughout the many years that the collection has existed. Uh, changes in cataloging pr processes and standards have also taken place along with uh, new catalogers or, or new staff coming into the library. So what they found was their catalog, there was a lot of inconsistencies in the catalog. <clears throat> and beyond that, there was a lot of items that were in their, in their library that were missing from the catalog. So before they decided that they needed to, uh, before they decided to move this a collection off uh, to the high density storage, <coughs> excuse me, they needed a full and accurate collection assessment. And their, the next step for them was to try to figure out how that uh, collection assessment could be done. They realized already they couldn't do it themselves. So they started to look for a vendor. And um, they brought in a few people and what they found was uh, a lot of the uh, people that they contacted were merchandise vendors and they're very good and very efficient at counting things, but not very efficient at creating or helping improve the collection and get it re really ready for the move. So they invited backstage in to talk a little bit about what we would do. They came in and demonstrated uh, or showed them our equipment. They had all the stakeholders involved in this meeting, they brought, presented a variety of problems to us and we, we talked about various solutions for these problems. And uh, we left uh, with, uh, I believe uh, the University of Virginia had a good feeling about backstage doing a little bit more than just counting their collection. They were gonna help them bring it up to, up to par and get ready to move on to um, the high density storage in the new library. So before I turn this over to the project manager, I want to talk a little bit about how Backstage does on-site services. First of all, we, we hire, and usually that person already works for us, but we hire a project manager that has the capabilities and under, uh, of working in the library and understands the library. <coughs> Excuse me, most of our project managers already work for us, as I said. Uh, and so what, once we determine who's the best fit for that, we send them out on site. They, for a couple of weeks prior to production or for studying the inventory in this case, they will spend some time working with the library to determine, to finalize the process that they're gonna do. And they will also spend some time hiring staff. We look for staff that uh, has affiliation with the library or has an education that would require them to spend time in a library. What we're looking for are people that know and, and feel right and good about working in a library. After we have our staff and our manager has worked with the, um, the liaison and the, uh, um, the staff at the library, then we get, we're ready for production or ready to move on with the inventory. 
I want to now introduce our project manager out at the Alderman Library for the University of Virginia. His name's Jacob Bastian. Jacob has worked with us for several years and has done several different types of on-site jobs. Beyond that, he has worked um, in the metadata department and the digitization department. So he really was a good fit for this job. Jacob, welcome, and I'm going to turn it over to you. All right, thanks, John. <clears throat> so as John mentioned, uh, my name is Jacob Bastian. I'm one of the on-site project managers for Backstage Library Works, and more specifically, I am the project manager handling the Inventory Plus project at Alderman Library. So now that John talked about the, uh, the problems that the library faced and recognizing that they needed to perform an inventory, I'm going to talk about the solutions and the implementation of those solutions that we came up with in partnership with the staff at Alderman Library. So before I get into the details, I'm going to explain the makeup of the collection at Alderman Library. Being a large academic library, as John mentioned, they have an estimated amount of two and a half million items. These items are split into three different collections. You have the main stacks, which is just a general collection, makes up about 1.8 million items. Um, and it took us about six months to inventory this area and about seven months to process all of the problem items that we found. Next, you have the government documents. Um, being a federal depository library, uh, Alderman Library has a substantial amount of government documents, not only US government documents, but also Virginia and international documents. Uh, this collection is about 650,000, and it took us about three months to inventory and about four months to pro process all of the problems. The smallest collection in the library is their Tibetan collection. Uh, this collection makes up just under 20,000 items, and it took us about a week to inventory and about a week and a half to process all of the problem items. So I'll start with the very beginning. So coming into this project, we knew that the library had very specific goals that they needed met by the end of this inventory. This first and foremost includes the actual inventory itself. Uh, this involves scanning the barcode of each book, which in our uh, inventory software created a digital timestamp. This timestamp listed the actual barcode number that was scanned and exactly what time it was scanned, thus verifying that it is on their shelves. Uh, with this list that we were able to give to the library, they were able to upload it into their ILS and fill in a little inventory uh, section of their ILS for each item. This way they could run various reports and understand, okay, what was found, what was missing, where was it found, et cetera. Another aspect that they wanted to accomplish during this inventory was they wanted any items that had inconsistencies in their uh, database to be pulled for their attention. Um, inconsist inconsistencies could include things such as call numbers that aren't correctly represented on the item or titles that are spelled incorrectly or don't even match or generally just an item that isn't even attached to the correct record in their database. Uh, another aspect, and this is more of the cataloging side of this pro project, was they knew that there was a decent amount of items in their library that either did not have a barcode at all or if it did have a barcode was not in any way connected to their ILS. So this is something that they wanted remedied as part of the inventory. Two other aspects um, of the inventory that they wanted accomplished were also that they wanted all of the books cleaned completely clear of any dust bunnies. Since they were moving the entire collection to their brand new high density storage facility, they wanted to make sure that none of the dust made it there as well. Also, while it wasn't originally part of the project, they realized that as we pulled all of these problem books and brought them to their attention for fixing, that it was such a large amount, they were not able to keep up with reshelving them. So eventually they decided to have us take care of reshelving those problem books as well. Uh, another note on the uh, cataloging end of the aspect was, while on site, since we were hiring temporary technicians and we only trained them uh, in minor aspects of MARC records, so we created brief bibliographic records, what we did was we took those records and passed them on to Backstage's catalogers in Provo, Utah, and they converted them to full records, either through um, 
uh, machine matching or uh, match cataloging, or if need be, original cataloging. And I'll talk more specifically about that in a couple minutes. So since we knew the goals, the library understood the goals, the next step was for the library to prepare to have a vendor come on site and perform an inventory. The first thing they needed to do in preparation for this inventory was to gather all the heads of the various departments throughout the library um, of whom would be affected through this inventory. This included those from cataloging, collections access, circulation, technology services, and facilities. There were a lot of aspects that needed to be addressed, such as, um, is it a fire hazard if we have technicians uh, working through the stacks in front of possible emergency exits? What kind of electricity access do we have throughout the building? What kind of Wi-Fi access is there? What sort of needs does the cataloging department have when it comes to us accessing their database and working within it? These are the various things that the library had to get together and work out ahead of time. Um, it was especially important when it came to the cataloging end of preparing for us to come on site. The uh, liaison for the library who worked with me um, throughout this project, uh, her name's Michelle, um, she spearheaded handling the library's end of this. And there were two vital things that she did that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the first thing that she did was she set out steps that she knew needed to be prepared on the library's end and who had to handle them. She kept this uh, visual task list up to date so that all who needed access to it could get access to it. And people could raise their concerns, make any comments, or bring up any ideas of how to uh, expedite the process or make it a lot uh, smoother um, on their end. The second thing that she prepared that was vitally important to the project was an idea of when and where they wanted us to work throughout the library um, during the time we would be there. This was especially important in the planning process um, of inventorying an academic library because you have to consider about which sections of the library are typically more full during say exam periods um, and it would be better for us to inventory them during, say, winter break or spring break when the library would be empty. Uh, now that I've talked about the um, preparation the library done had to do in preparation for this, I'm going to discuss the solutions that we came up with uh, with the library to um, inventory their collection. So before I even arrived on site and began all of my preparations for the inventory, uh, John and I went to the library to evaluate and sample their collection. This way we could get an idea of what we were going to be looking at as far as the inventory went. Um, during this sample, what we did was we grabbed various books randomly throughout the entire library and assessed each one asking the following questions. Does this book have a barcode? Is the barcode connected to a record in the library's database? And if so, um, is it the correct record? You know, are there any problems with it? Um, through that sample, we were able to extrapolate an idea of uh, exactly an estimate of how many books were going to need our attention, how many books we'd be pulling for problems, and how many books uh, were going to need us to catalog. Um, using these numbers, we were able to assess exactly how long this inventory was going to take and what sort of number of techni technicians we were going to need in order to accomplish this project. Once we had that idea, we were able to go ahead and get started with preparation for the project. Um, to begin for preparation for this project, I first had to set up all the equipment that the technicians I was going to hire would be using. The most important piece of equipment that I had to put together was the intranet. Um, this is essentially just a localized wireless network loaded with the library's database so that technicians could access it while they were performing the inventory. This was necessary because Wi-Fi was a little touch and go throughout the deep stacks of the library. How this worked was we had a computer mounted on a mobile cart that we would move throughout the library depending on where we were inventorying. And also throughout the section we were working in, I had various wireless extenders so that it could be reached no matter what part of the section uh, technicians were working in had access to the database. 
This was especially important because as the technicians were going along and scanning each individual book, they needed to be able to see in real time what the library's database said the book they scanned um, should be. Whether uh, And using this method, they were able to determine if items needed cataloging attention or if they should be pulled because there were problems with the record. The second thing that I had to do in preparation for the inventory was hire two teams. So as I mentioned, there are two main goals for the library at the end of this inventory. One was to account for every book in the library, and the second was to catalog any items that weren't represented in their ILS. So the first team that I hired was the inventory technicians. This fluctuated, but usually made up of about 10 technicians. These technicians were responsible for the actual inventorying in the stacks of every single book, as well as cleaning the stacks. The other team I hired were the data technicians. Again, this team usually made up of about between eight and 12 people throughout the, throughout the project. And these technicians were responsible for handling all of the books that were not represented in the library's database, which included uh, finding existing records in their database and connecting them, creating brief bibliographic records if they did not exist, as well as reshelving all of the books that they processed. When it came to hiring data technicians, I especially needed to find technicians that understood all sorts of non-Roman languages. Being an academic library, they had a large collection of books that were in Chinese, Russian, Japanese, Hebrew, Arabic, and so on. Um, one note that I will say is, of course, I was not able to find technicians that spoke every single language in the planet. So one of the resources that Backstage has on hand that we were able to utilize was we have a large group of contract catalogers throughout the world who understand these languages. So if I was not able to find a technician that understood a specific language, we were able to take pictures of the bibliographic information from items and send them along to those contract catalogers who could then process the books remotely. So I've said a lot up to this point. So before I move on, um, I'm going to open up to any questions you might have at this point. Thanks, Jacob. John, our first question is from Jeffrey, and he's wondering if we do inventories for archives as well as libraries where there might be mixed materials such as box materials and manuscripts in the collection. We have done one that was the Jewish Theological Society. And uh, yeah, so we have a, we have experience, and we don't have an overwhelming experience, and we have been there, and understand the the difference. Basically, a lot of these collections are are boxed, and then there's a portion of them that are not, and the and the material itself is is often very delicate. Jacob, um, Justin is wondering uh, what ILS system UVA uses. So UVA uses um, Circe, Dynex uh, for cataloging these workflows. Uh, Symphony workflows, I believe is the full name. And then we have a question from Michelle who's wondering if we also do original cataloging or copy cataloging only. So we actually do both. Um, what we do is on site, we create brief bibliographic records if there is not a um, match in the library's database. And I'm going to get more specific with this later. You'll actually see an example of what this looks like. But essentially what happens is every month we send all of the brief records we created on site to our metadata department in Provo. What they do is they run all of those brief records through a machine matching, an automated machine matching process that checks those brief records against um, LC as well as OCLC databases. And through that, they're able to quickly machine match uh, those brief bibs. Anything that they don't find through machine matching is then manually matched by catalogers in the office. At that point, if they don't find any matches, that's when they resort to original cataloging. And then John, Judith is asking if we are able to inventory audiovisual items. Uh, there's no reason why we couldn't. It has not been part of the collections that we've inventoried in the past, but it would be the same process. And then William's wondering about our inventory software. Is it homegrown, something we wrote ourselves, or is it something that's an industry standard out there? No, it is homegrown. 
Um, and then Anne is wondering, how do we account for space to be added books? So how do we evaluate spacing and when we're adding books into that collection? I think I'm understanding that correct question correctly. Well, in an inventory, we're not, we're not really, our, our charge typically is not to evaluate the space because it's not, we're, we're not doing a reclassification where we're moving books around typically. Now we could do that as part of the inventory plus, but for Alderman, for instance, we're just going through their collection and uh, inventory and then putting the books back to where they belong. So one thing I'll say on that is if possibly someone were to, let's say, interfile a small collection into a larger one, um, it typically comes down to we would estimate based on the size of that collection um, and how much space is needed in order to fit all of it. And that kind of, like John said, goes down the realms of um, how we handle reclassification projects, but it is something we can do. And we're also, uh, in, well, we're doing this at, at Alderman as we speak. We're moving a small portion of the, well, actually, what we're doing is we're moving a por uh, the collection of the uh, adjoining Clemens Library over to um, the Alderman Library temporarily. And in that instance, we have to allocate appropriate space as well. Thank you. And then um, Charlotte is wondering about the costs associated with this service and the best way. And I know the answer to this, but I'll let you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we can pay. <laughs> well, the cost is, I'll tell you what, there's, there's no flat fees here. Uh, the inventory, we would, it's all based on the inventory. So the inventory is going to include the cost of the inventory as well as all the management cost that that is going to be included in the inventory and then we have uh, uh thanks to jacob built a nice matrix for the other services and be and we can give you a ballpark just by get, getting us the estimate of what uh, what is out there for instance if you think that 10 percent of your collection is going to need attention beyond just an inventory we can estimate what that's going to cost. And if you think that, oh, there's, a, we want to clean the stacks and we have this many shelves, we can give you an estimate of what that's going to cost. But this is all, I mean, there is no flat answer for this. We really have to uh, start talking to you, get ideas of what kind of numbers we're talking about, and then the final cost will be based on typically a site visit so we can do a sample. Um, the truth of the matter is, even if you think 10% of your collection needs work, it could be that you don't, you're not completely sure. And so we sample and get a better idea of what, how much that, of that collection really needs additional work. So it's customized really, the, the cost in the project overview is customized to the specific library. Right. Okay. We're going to take one more question from Justin on this session, and then I encourage everybody to continue with their questions. We'll have additional time at the end of the presentation to answer um, every question that's been asked. Um, Justin is wondering, as a follow-up, were the processing um, and inventory parts of the project done simultaneously? Okay, so they, yeah, so they were done simultaneously. Um, the inventory started about a week ahead of time just to make sure that we had some material for the uh, data technicians to work on. But once that we had that first week of uh, inventorying, the data technicians started right after and the entire time they've been working simultaneously. Thank you again, everyone, for those questions. And again, we'll continue with the questions that have been asked so far at the end. And again, continue to ask all through this next part of the presentation as well. Thanks, Jacob and John. Yeah. All right, thank you, Beth Ann. Okay, so we're gonna continue with the uh, solutions that we worked out with the library to meet their inventory needs. Now, at this portion of the presentation, I'm gonna talk about um, exactly step-by-step -step how the technicians I hired handled going throughout the library inventory and everything. So first, we're gonna start by looking at the cleaning because that's exactly where we started with this project. 
Um, because the main goal of the library was to make sure that no dust bunnies or any dust whatsoever made it over to their new high density storage facility when they moved the entire collection. Essentially, we went through the library with um, uh, HEPA certified vacuums that met OSHA requirements um, and just vacuumed all the dust off the top of every single book throughout the entire collection. The second part and one of the most important parts, the actual inventory. Uh, technicians went through the stacks with a little mobile cart, and you can kind of see it in the background there behind one of my technicians. Um, and on this cart was a small laptop loaded with our inventory program, and we had little finger barcode scanners that they could scan each book with. How it would work is they had the, the uh, program open, and they would scan the barcode of each book into the program. Once the book was scanned, a little window would pop up. It would either tell them that there was a record connected to it or that there wasn't. If there wasn't, they would simply say, no, they don't want to inventory it because it's not in their system. And then they would pull it and set it on a cart for the data technicians to work on. If there was a record, what, they, what the window also showed was certain match points for the technician to check against the physical item. These match points on the program were pulled from the library's database and included title, call number, and location within the library. If any of these were incorrect, the technician then pulls the book and sets it aside for the library's um, attention. And they would also stick a little acid-free flag in the book uh, to indicate exactly what the problem was and why we pulled it. Um, and then this program is actually where we get our full file of all of the scanned barcodes and their associated timestamps that is then uploaded into the library's database thus allowing them to create reports on their collection. The next process was the cataloging that the data technicians would handle. Um, once a cart was filled by the inventory technicians of books that were not connected to records, that cart would be brought to a data technician and they would go book by book and look for a record in the library's database so that they could just attach a new barcode to the book and attach that barcode to the record. When they were searching the library's database, they would search for terms such as Library of Congress control numbers or ISBNs, title or call number. If they exhausted all options and were not able to find a record in the library's database, it was then that they would create a short, uh, brief bibliographic record. Um, this record only consisted of items such as the terms they were just searching. Uh, Library of Congress control number, ISBN, title, call number, as well as author and publication information. This was the minimal amount of information that would then be needed for matches to be found. And like I said earlier during the question time, um, those brief records once a month are sent to the Provo office, the, uh, the metadata team at the Provo office, where they would run uh, those brief records through a machine matching process, searching the LC database as well as the OCLC database for matches. If something's not found, a cataloger will then manually search for matches. And if something is still not found, that's when we would take pictures of the books themselves so that professional catalogers in Provo can create the full original cataloging. Throughout the project, I also performed quality control checks to make sure that these technicians were accurately representing the data. And here you can see an example. On the left here, we have a brief record that one of my technicians created. And on the right is the machine match record that was found and then sent back to um, Alderman to be uploaded into their system. Uh, and last but not least, once all of the books were processed, the data technicians would then go ahead and reshelf them according to shelf list order uh, throughout the library. So now that John has introduced the challenges that Alderman Library faced and I've discussed the solutions that uh, we, alongside with the library, came up with and implemented, I'm going to pass it back to John Reese to talk about the results of this inventory. Thank you, Jacob. This will be brief, but I, I, it, the results were really quite amazing as far as I'm concerned. We had inventoried approximately 2.5 million items at the Alderman Library. Their estimation was pretty close. It was a little bit under, but it was close. So they, they knew how many books they had. Of those 2.5 million books, 500,000 items needed 
special care. Uh, most of them involved adding a, uh, connecting the, the book to an actual holding that existed on the, in the library. But that's a lot. That's almost uh, not quite a fourth, but that's, that's a big part of their collection that uh, accessibility was, uh, was minimized while um, these items were not connected to their library. You'd have to do shelf, uh, you'd have to do uh, shelf searches to find many of these items. Then, out of uh, that 500,000 items, 100,000 items needed full cataloging. So we created a brief bibliographic record here and then sent it to Provo for copy cataloging or full cataloging. That's a pretty substantial amount of, uh, as well. We cleaned 12,000 stacks of books in the library and we reshelved approximately 500 items in the library. So if you, if you look at the final results for the University of Virginia, they now probably can feel pretty comfortable that they're gonna be able to uh, maintain in, uh, their collection while it's moved off site and away from the Alderman Library through renovation. Re so anyhow, we're we're grateful to the University of Virginia for the uh, allowing us to go ahead and do this work for them. I am grateful for Jacob and his staff for doing such a fine job. And uh, what we're going to do now is turn the time back over to uh, to the people, our listeners here, to see if there's any additional questions. And again, thank you for your time. Thank you, John and Jacob. We do have some additional questions. Jacob, Michelle has a follow-up question to her cataloging question earlier. Are we doing our records in RDA or MARC? Uh, say that again, in RDA or MARC? Or MARC, yes. Uh, we are creating the original, the brief bibs in MARC and it is in RDA format. Um, okay. a, lot, a lot of the library is already in AACR2. Um, but they are trying to make the switch to RDA, so all the records that were created and matching our RDA. And then John Laurie shares that they have a large number of miniature books in their collection, and when she says large, she says about 40,000. And she's wondering how would we approach a collection such as this where they don't have barcodes on them? They're connected to the database, I take it. Well, uh, we would have to if they don't have barcodes, typically, and, and she's, she'll know and she can tell us, uh, they actually write the barcode somewhere in the book. And if they don't do that, then we're going to have to treat that book uh, as a, uh, a we're going to have to pull that book off the uh, shelves and search for the item to connect it. They won't be able to match it up to the system because there's there's nothing for us to read. Unless it's there, if it's there written, then we can type it in. It takes a little bit more time, though, but, you know, it can be done. Great. Thank you. Um, Jacob, Margaret's wondering if we created holdings and item records when we did the cataloging. So uh, we did not handle holdings in this um, in this project, but we did when it came to attaching to uh, records in the ILS, we did add items. And then Julie is wondering um, if we are going to be reviewing this webinar. And I did answer that already and let everybody know again that we are recording this webinar. It will be available in the, in the coming weeks once the editing is complete. And a link will be automatically sent to your email um, with, the D, with the content uh, audio and then also the slides as well. Um, um, Bino is wondering if we could give some information about the finger barcode scanners. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I'll let Jacob talk a little bit about that, but just for uh, the one thing I want to say about the finger barcoding, uh, our finger scanners is make sure you get the right kind because I got, uh, they worked wonderfully for about a month and then they died, <laughs> but some of them didn't. So it was, uh, that, that was just a matter of somehow getting the wrong vendor, but Jacob, tell a little bit about how they work compared to the regular scanner. So like John said, um, we decided to go with the finger barcode scanners for this project because we thought it would be more efficient. And it turned out to be, 
And I will echo what you mentioned in that if you decide to use finger barcode scanners yourself, make sure you know what you're getting because the ones we got did not last very long. However, when they did work, they worked wonderfully. They were Bluetooth uh, capable, but because of the fact that we had such a small amount of people working in a tight area, sorry, a large amount of people in such a tight area, when we went Bluetooth, they would uh, interfere with each other. So we kept it wired, which worked just as fine. We had nice long, I think they were nine foot cables that connected to the uh, laptop and we didn't get in the technician's what. Uh, way at all, um, but they worked wonderfully as long as they did, and we had one that stood the entire project. So, yeah, it was. I, I would of, say we'll use them in the future, but just invest in better ones. Yeah. Thank you, Jacob. Um, Judith is wondering if only a bib record existed in the library's catalog, but there was no holdings record and/or item record. Were codes for location and search status managed by backstage technicians, and was that? process discussed beforehand? It was. So essentially, when we um, would add items to one of their records, the way that CRC was set up is they have a nice, they have two nice different views. They have the mark view, and then they also have the, what's called the call number item view. And in that is where you can edit um, terms such as item type or location, um, as well as class scheme and things like that. And it was dictated ahead of time um, how they would like these set up. There was a rule of thumb that if the library had a bunch of items attached to a record already and they had dictated what the type was or the class scheme that we would just follow that when adding more items. But if there was nothing added already, there was kind of a general, um, in this case you call it bound journal, in this case you call it serial. Um, and the locations were very easily defined. And if they were ever unsure or if it was ever unsure, we would um, work with the library to make sure that that was all worked out. Great, thank you. Christina is asking how many missing books were identified um, or records without books? So I think there's two parts of this question that I can kind of get into. Um, if we estimate that it's about 500,000 that we processed that weren't connected, um, and of 100,000 of those, they were fully cataloged. So that means about 400,000 were attached to records that already existed but weren't connected. Um, as far as missing um, items, we were able to find, I think the exact number was somewhere around 20,000 items in the library that were officially considered lost, that they just did not know where they were. Um, so we were able to find those for them as well. Thanks, Jacob. And Jordan is wondering how many people made up your team at Alderman Library to work on the inventory and how long has it taken to complete? So it fluctuated because as we needed people for the more difficult areas, I would hire more. Um, I think at our lowest, we had about 14 technicians and at our largest, we've had about 26. And um, this inventory has taken us a total. We're still actually at the tail end of it. We're kind of cleaning things up right now, but um, about 10 months, 10 months total. And then um, can you share any details on the Wi-Fi extenders that you use? Julie's wondering. So like brand or I guess they want to know. Um, so we are using um, for the intranet setup, we have a nice Dell desktop computer stationed on an AV, and then we have a Netgear wireless router attached to that desktop. And then throughout the section, we have three Netgear, I think the model is 7800W um, wireless extenders. They connect to that original wireless router and then just extend the signal further into the library. Great. And then um, John, Judith is wondering if we've had any experiences and or problems when a library is part of a shared consortium in working on in inventories. You know, I, we, the inventories we've done thus far, we haven't experienced that. So I can't really answer uh, whether there would be a problem there or not.
That was the last of our questions that had appeared in the question window. I'll go ahead and give people a couple, a minute or two, if there's anything else they'd like to ask. In the meantime, again, just a reminder that we have recorded today's presentation and the recording along with the slides will be available to you in the coming weeks via an email link we'll send to you. We would also like to take this opportunity to thank Michelle Vermillion with the Alderman Library for allowing us to use their Inventory Plus project as an example for our case study in this presentation today. <clears throat> I'm not seeing any more questions pop up here, John and Jacob. Thank you again so much for your presentation today. And then thanks to each of you for joining us and participating with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Bethann.